So last week we spent a good portion of the time going through the first half of chapter nine. So we talked about various types of liabilities and how we would go about accounting for them. Um, and we started with talking about how oftentimes companies will do a mixture of um, an equity type of financing, which is increasing shareholders versus debt. The benefit of having debt is that the interest is deductible on the income statement. Whereas when you pay dividends for shareholders, that is not a de deductible item. That is part of stockholders equity. So one of the ways in which people finance things is to take out leases. And we talked about the difference between what we call an operating lease and a capital lease. A capital lease is when you're really buying it, just the way you're financing all of it. And technically, it is a purchase. So they um, accounting requires that you add that asset and add the entire debt. Whereas with a lease, it's just an expense. An operating lease, it's just an expense. We moved on to talk about um, amortizing or the amortization schedule when we have a large long-term loan. How we show the balance and after each payment each month, that payment includes principal and includes interest and how we show the amount that we pay the portion that goes to interest, the difference will go to decreasing the loan balance. So then from there, we journaled the various transactions for when we take out a loan, our payments on the loan, how a portion goes to the reduction of the loan balance, note payable, and the rest goes to interest expense. So we showed that there. And those numbers are going to change every single month because as the loan balance decreases, the interest will also decrease. Then from there, we um, went on to talk about bonds. And that's where we left off. And that's kind of the biggest challenge in this chapter are talking about bonds. So bonds are basically, hey Jim, bonds are basically a way to finance long-term debt. And bonds have some interesting characteristics because with a bond, the bond on the actual sheet, the note or the bond paper shows the amount of the bond. It will show the stated interest rate on the bond. Now that stated interest rate only helps us to know how much it pays out every six months. Usually bonds pay semi-annually, which would be every six months. So that stated interest rate on that bond is only showing how much the bonds will pay every six months. You see here, there's a $100,000 bond paying a stated interest rate of 7%. All that means is every six months, they are going to pay the 100,000 times three and a half percent because 7% is annually. Three and a half percent is every six months. 
So that stated rate means that's how much they pay in a year if they're paying out semi-annually, three and a half percent or 100,000 times 3.5%, they pay $3,500 every six months. That's all the stated interest rate means. What really matters with a bond is what's the market rate. So if the stated interest rate, which is on the, P, on the bond, is one price, and if the market rate is the same rate that is on the bond, then it's really easy. If the market rate is 7% and the stated interest rate is 7%, then you're gonna issue those bonds at the face amount at the $100,000 because they're the same. So investors will pay $100,000 to buy this bond. The stated rate is identical to the market rate. The market rate is what the market will bear. What's going on in the interest rate now? Now, now um, the interest rates are crazy. Um, you can take out a loan for two and a half percent. So in that case, the stated rate would be way higher. The market rate would be so much lower that those bonds would be issued at what we call a premium. Now, if the market rate is higher than the stated rate, the bonds are going to be issued at what we call a discount. The bonds are going to be issued under $100,000. Why? Because the going rate is greater than what they're going to be paying out every six months. Therefore, an investor will only buy this bond if they can buy it for under $100,000 to make up for the interest they're not getting. So... In a case where the market rate is higher than what the stated rate shows on the face of the bond, these bonds are going to be offered at a discount. That discount basically allows that extra market interest rate to take care of itself. In other words, if the market is at eight, but the stated rate is at seven, I'm not going to spend 100,000 on these bonds when I can get interest better in another investment. So to make this equitable, the issuer of the bonds would issue these bonds below the face amount at 93,000. That would make up for the market rate of interest. Now, if, like in our situation right now, if the market rate is lower than the stated rate, then the bonds would be issued at a premium. So right now, interest is very low. If the stated rate on these bonds was at 7%, and yet our market interest rate is a lot lower. Well, they would issue these bonds at a premium, which means they're going to pay a higher rate than really what the market has to bear. Therefore, to make it equitable for the issuer of the bond, they're going to require that the bonds are issued or sold for a lot higher than the face amount of the bond. The way that you can calculate the face value of the bond, excuse me, the issue price of the bond, there are three ways. One is to use a calculator. 
One is to use Excel. And one method is to use the tables in the back of the book. Now, the tables that would be used in the back of the book would be the present value of, an, of a dollar. And that would be for the lump sum of 100,000. So I believe it's table two in the book that a present value of a dollar, you go to that table and you locate the interest rate for every six months. So if it's an annual interest rate of 7%, market, or in this case, it's a market rate of 6% here. Market rate of 6%, but remember, they get, they pay every six months. So it's really an interest rate of 3% per period. So you go to the spot on the table that shows where the interest is 3%, and the number of periods is 20. This would be a 10-year bond paying twice a year. So the number of payments or periods is 20. You go and you look at that factor. You locate that factor. In this case on table two, it would be 0 0.55368. You multiply the face amount times that factor to come up with what is that um, dollar amount worth today? The present value of that $100,000 in 20 periods or 10 years from now, today is worth 55368 Then we're going to look at another table. Table four is the present value of an annuity. What we're talking about is that $3,500 payment that will be given to you every six months. We need to figure out all those payments, those 20 payments, what are those worth today? So we go to table four where we see the interest rate at 3% and the number of periods is 20. And we find the factor of 14.87747. So that 3,500 in payments times that factor gives us the present value of that amount is, is 52,071. We're gonna add those two figures together to come up with the present value of what this bond should be. And that would be the issue price that they will issue this bond for. So, this slide here is really important. No, if the stated rate is less than the market rate, bonds will be issued at a discount. If the stated rate is equal to the market rate, then bonds are going to be issued at face amount. And then if the stated rate is greater then the market rate, bonds will be issued at a premium. So we then did a couple problems and determined um, how we went about calculating the interest in the various aspects of bonds. So I'm just gonna go through this problem again. On January 1st, 2018, 
Waterworld issues 26 million of 7% bonds. Now that means that's the stated rate on the bonds. And all that 7% means <clears throat> is that is, that's what they're going to pay out. It has nothing to do with the market rate. They're due in 10 years. With interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st each year. Water World intends to use the funds to build the world's largest water avalanche and the tornado, a giant outdoor vortex <coughs> in which riders spin in progressively smaller and faster circles till they drop through a small tunnel in the bottom. It sounds dreadful. If the market rate is at 7%, will the bonds issue at face amount, a discount, or a premium? Calculate the issue price. Thank you, Jeff. Sorry, guys. I'm dealing with the dog who's not very happy. Okay. So in this case, if the market rate is the same as the stated rate, then they're going to issue at face amount. Another way we can figure this is we have certain information. The 26 million times every payment would be three and a half percent. So 26 million times three and a half percent, I'm just gonna do it even though it shows us that amount. So 26 million times 3.5% means the payment every six months would be $910,000. We're gonna go into formulas. We're gonna go into financial, present value. The rate is three and a half percent. The number of periods, I believe that was 20. The payment is 910,000. The, the face value on the bond is 26 million. So it's, I did something wrong. But it's basically going to issue at face amount. The rate, 3.5%. Twenty periods, nine hundred ten thousand. So the bonds are going to issue at twenty six million. Now, if the stated rate is seven percent. But the market rate is 10%. So that means the market rate is 5% every six months. If we go back and do it that way and change the market rate to 5%, then you see the bonds will issue at 21 million 139 738. Did I do something wrong here? I must have. Let me go. They're saying 24,000. So let me go back, do it again. Here, let me put it in here financial. Present value, the rate is 5%, 20 periods, 
thousand. Twenty six million is the face amount. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I know what's happening here. This, I am right. This one shows that the um, market rate is at 8%. You see how it's 4% every period. So if in this case, uh, this says 10%, the solution says 8%. If the market rate is 10%, it, they would be issued for 21,139,737. If we switch this to 8% or 4% per period, then it would be the 24,233,258. So using Excel, in my opinion, is just the easiest way to be able to calculate the issue price. Then we moved on and we talked about how we go about recording bonds. So we talked about depending on how, if they're issued at a discount or a premium, we're gonna have an extra section called premiums on bonds payable or discount on bonds payable. So when they're issued for the face amount, it's real easy. We debit the, um, is showing 10% on bonds, we should be debiting our cash because that is what we're receiving. And we will credit our bonds payable for the same amount. And then in this respect, each payment period, every six months, we will debit our interest expense and we will credit our cash. That's when bonds are issued at face value. Now, when bonds are issued at a discount, <clears throat> it's a little different. We're actually only receiving the issue price. We issue them for 93,205. The bonds payable is 100,000 credit. That difference will be called the discount on bonds payable. It's the difference between the face amount and the issue price. On the books in the balance sheet, we will show these bonds at 93,205. That is what it's listed, what the bonds value is right now. Now, when we make our first payment, it's a little different because we've got more involved. We will take the issue price of the bonds times the market rate times half a year to come up with our interest of 37.28. Our payment every six months is 3,500. The difference between the interest and the cash will be offset to discount on bonds payable to make up for the difference. Then what happens is the second payment, that discount on bonds payable of 228 gets added to the outstanding amount on the bond. It issued for 93,205. After that first payment, the bond payable is not just the 93,205, we add the 228 to it times half the year of an 8% market rate is now 37.37. Do you see the bond balance will increase and the interest will also increase after every payment. 
Then after the second payment, we're gonna have a new balance in our bond payable. We'll add this $237 to the balance. So when bonds are issued at a discount, at the end of the period, the bond balance will end up being $100,000. So you see here, the amortization schedule shows the carrying value or the balance on the bonds payable increases after each payment and ultimately will come to $100,000. Now, when they're issued at a premium, it's the opposite that happens. The bond balance is higher than $100,000. It's $107,439. We only are, um, the face amount of the bonds is only $100,000. So the difference will be treated as a premium on bonds payable. So on the balance sheet, we're going to show the carrying value of $107,439. Now the first interest payment is going to show the interest on the carrying amount, the 107,439 times the market rate times half a year. The payment amount that we pay out every six months is 3,500. You see the interest is less than that 3,500. So we offset that to premium on bonds payable. So after that first payment, the bond balance clearing value has been reduced. It's no longer 107,439. We reduce it by that $277. So the next payment is going to show a lower carrying value, which ultimately means lower interest expense. And the difference goes against the premium on the bonds payable. So we're ultimately getting to the same place. As you see here, when we issue bonds at a premium, over time, that bond carrying value will be 100,000. When we issue bonds at a discount, they start lower, the issue price is lower, but in the end at maturity, that bond payable will be at 100,000. And the if it's at a face amount, of course, it is issued for 100 and at maturity. It is a hundred. When bonds are issued at face amount, the carrying value and the corresponding interest expense are constant over time. When bonds are issued at a discount, the carrying value and the corresponding interest expense increase over time. And then when bonds issue at a premium, the carrying value and the corresponding interest expense will decrease over time. So anyway, we went through some various problems. I think I gave you um, a problem, some ant problems in the book. I think what I'm gonna do here is go to McGraw-Hill and we'll work on one before we finish um, talking about the retirement on the bond. So if we look here at problem
Well, let's see. Okay. Let's look at problem 9-4-B. Viking Voyager specializes in the design and production of replica Viking boats. On January 1st, 2021, the company issues 3 million of 9% bonds due in 10 years with interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st each year. If the market interest rate is 9%, the bonds will issue at 3 million. Again, face amount. Stated rate is the same as the uh, market rate. Record the bond issue on January 1st, 2021 and the first two semi-annual payments on June 30th and December 31st. So what we'll do here, let me just pull up this. So our <clears throat> should have had this ready. I apologize. Okay. <clears throat> Nine four B. <clears throat> so we would show those payments. <clears throat> First of all, we would show the um, issuance of the bonds, a debit to cash, a credit to bonds payable. Let me just make sure I got that right. For 3 million. So we would have a debit to cash, a credit to bonds payable, and then the first payment will be the 3 million times 4.5% or 3 million times 9% times half a year. Interest expense, 135,000. We credit our cash for 135,000. The second payment is gonna be identical to that because since the face amount um, is what we issued them for because the stated rate and the market rate were the same. We will have every payment will be a debit to interest expense for 135,000 and a credit to cash for 135,000. Now, if the market interest rate is 10%, the bonds will issue for 2,813,067. We don't have to figure out the issuance price. It's telling us. Record the bond issue on January 1st, 2021. And the first two semi-annual interest payments on June 30th and December 31st. I'm gonna give you a minute or two to try this and then we'll go through it.
Okay. So we know the issuance price is $2,813.067 is what the cash is we are going to receive. If the bonds payable is 3 million, the difference will be our discount on bonds payable. Now the interest expense is gonna be calculated by the issue price, the 2,813,067 times 5% each period is 140,653. The cash will remain constant. It was up here 135,000, so we credit the 135,000. The difference will go to the discount on bonds payable. The 56,53 will be credited. So when we have the next payment, we will add that 56.53 to our issue price of 2 million or the carrying price, 2,813,067. So we have a new carrying um, price on the bonds times 5%. The interest now is 140,936. The cash out is going to be cons constant, 135. The difference will go into the discount on bonds payable of 5936. So the carrying value of the bonds will increase after each payment, which means the interest also increases after each payment, okay? Then the next one says, if the market rate is 8%, the bonds are gonna issue at 3,203,855. Record the bond issue and the first two payments. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. I want you to attempt this one while I get a Diet Coke. So as we look here, we know that the cash is going to be the 3,203,855. The bond payable is 3 million. And then we see that the payment is 135 which leads us to know that the difference will go against the premium on the bonds payable. So now after every payment, our carrying value decreases and our interest will also decrease. So by the time the bonds mature, we will have the carrying value equal to the bonds payable. So our interest expense in the first period is 
the 3,203,855 times 4% or 128,154. The cash paid out is always gonna be consistent, which the difference goes into the premium on bonds payable. So after that first payment, our carrying value decreases $6,846. So the interest expense also decreases. Our cash paid out is the same and the difference will go into the premium on bonds payable. So this leads us to where we start today. I spent a little too much time doing that, I'm sorry. Now we're gonna talk about retiring bonds. Bond retirements occur when the issuing corporation buys back the bonds. So if we assume $100,000 in bonds are gonna be retired at maturity. Well, then that's really easy. There's no gain, there's no loss. We, re, we held them to maturity. We spend the 100,000 to buy them back. So we zero out our debt, we credit our cash. Easy. There's no gain or loss recorded. But what if? California Coasters issues bonds on January 1st, 2018 above face amount at a premium at 107,439. The carrying value of the bonds one year later on December 31st, 2018 is 106,877. Record the bond retirement before maturity on December 31st for 114,353. So we are going to buy these bonds back at 114,353. So the first thing we know we need to do is zero out the bonds, zero out any premium that's left on them. Now, in this case, we know if the bonds were issued at 107,000, but a year later, they're telling us what the um, carrying value is, the 106,877. So we know the bonds are 100,000. The premium is 6,877. We show the cash we're paying of 114,353. So it means we have a loss on these bonds of the difference, the 74, 76. They, we record a loss between the difference between what we had to repurchase them for versus what the carrying value was on the books. No gain or loss is recorded on bonds when they get retired at maturity. But when bonds are retired before maturity, we have to record either a gain or a loss on the early extinguishment of the bonds. And that gain or loss is gonna be the difference between the price we pay to repurchase the bonds and the bonds carrying value. So a company retires a $50 million bond issue before maturity when the carrying value is 48 million, but the market value is 54 million. That means that's what we're gonna to have to pay for them. The company will record a loss of 6 million, a gain of 6 million, neither a gain or loss or a debit to cash of 54 million. I want you to put your answer in the Um, chat box. Let's see what everyone comes up with.
Waiting on a couple more people. Okay, so the consensus here, ah, is what? A, 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 yes, you've got a loss here of $6 million. Now, exercise 916 <clears throat> on January 1st. 2018 Splash City issues 500,000 of 9% bonds due in 20 years with interest payable semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st each year. The market interest rate on the issue date is 10% and the bonds issued at 457,102. Using an amortization schedule, show that the bonds have a carrying value of 458,000 on December 31st, 2019. So the way in which we show that is we start with the issue price of 457,102. Now, we have to go through four payments. So we know the amount paid is going to be the bond 500,000 times four and a half percent. 500,000 times four and a half percent, the payment will consistently be 22,500 every six months. <clears throat> then what we'll do is since we know <coughs> that the issue price was 457,102, and we know the market rate on these bonds is 10% annually or 5% every six months, we can calculate out the carrying value times the interest rate, which is the 22,855, that difference between the interest and the cash paid will increase our carrying value price on the loan, on the bonds. So after the first payment, our new carrying value is 457, 457, which is the 457, 102, plus the increase in the carrying value. Now for the second payment, we take the carrying value times the interest rate to give us our new interest expense. Then we take the difference between the payment and the interest expense to show that as an increase in our loan balance. Okay, so at the end of the second payment, we know our new carrying value is 457,830. We do that until we figure out what the carrying value is <clears throat> on the bonds as of December 31st, 2019. We come up with the carrying value of 458, 633. So all you have to do to get that carrying value is to continue to um, figure out what the various um, um, payments, um, transactions are for each of those periods, okay? Now, if the market interest rate 
drops to 7% on December 31st, it will cost $601,452 to retire the bonds. Record the retirement of the bonds on December 31st, 2019. So they know it's dropping. So we know the cost of 601,452. To record the retirement on the bonds, we need to zero out the bond. We need to zero out the discount on the bonds payable. <clears throat> we know the cash and the difference will show as a loss on the sale of the bonds. Remember, <clears throat> we need to zero out the bonds payable and zero out the balance on the discount of the bonds payable. Um, then the, the ratios you can handle yourself. These would be ratios regarding debt. Let's see, that's it. So let's go and look at your homework just to make sure you are feeling pretty good about it. Your homework. will show. In this case, on January 1st, 2021, Stoops Entertainment purchases a building for 420, paying 110 down and borrowing the remaining. Record the purchase of the building. So that is pretty straightforward. We've done that. Then they purchase a building and they want us to go through the amortization schedule. So we need to show initially when we purchase the building um what our carrying value is right here the four uh excuse me the 310 and then it wants you to provide an amortization schedule showing how much we're paying out the int interest expense and the decrease in the carrying value now they're telling you the installment payment so it should be straightforward for you. Then uh, record the payments. Just what we've done in the lecture here. How much were, was actually paid in interest? How much was actually paid against the loan? figure out the stockholders. So this is regarding um, leasing and the difference between capital leasing and um, operating leases. Figure out the debt to equity ratio regarding leases. Um, now, this one, temptation vacations issues 49 million in bonds that pay semi-annually. <clears throat> um, were, were the bonds issued at face amount, a discount or premium? Well, if they issued 49 million of bonds and we see the carrying value is 55 million, they were issued at a premium, weren't they? Then again, a bunch of these kind of problems. This one says, what is the annual stated annual interest rate? Well, you would figure this out by seeing how much cash is being paid 
dividing that by the 45, 9 million bonds, and that's going to be your half a year stated interest rate. Half a year. So you'll need to double that. What's the market rate? How do we determine the market rate? Well, the market rate is related to the carrying value times the market rate is the interest expense. So you can go backwards to figure that out. So a lot of these are just what we've covered already. Bond, it had to record the various bond issue. Now here, this one wants you to use the charts. The market interest rate is 6% and the bonds issue at face amount. Use the appropriate factors from the table. So if Christmas time is, has a stated rate of 6% and a market rate of 6%, what's the issue price? And then you're going to create an amortization schedule. Now I'll tell you right now, you're not gonna use the future value of a dollar or the future value of an annuity. Remember, we've talked about the present value of a dollar and the present value of an annuity. Here, you're gonna to go to the charts and figure out if the stated rate is 6%, the market rate is 7%, what's the issue price? And you're gonna create the first three rows of an amortization schedule. Again, same thing, some ratios, and then you're done. So guys, <clears throat> really, we tried to break this chapter nine up into two weeks. Um, for, I've noticed for some people, the um, bonds can be confusing, but if you really just um, understand the concept of the face amount versus the carrying value, it all can click together. Any questions before we finish? Well, guys, you have a great um, week, and I will see you back on next Wednesday. We're chapter 10. We're on the, the end. We're on the slide, the, the slide going down. You guys take care.